Hello and welcome to another episode of Second Hand Stories. This is a place where I tell you stories. What kind? Well, histories, mysteries and unbelievable histories. Today's story takes place in the year 1902. And here's what happens. A ship limps into a harbor in a place called St. Lucia. The ship is in a very bad state and it slowly makes its way into this harbor. When the people at St. Lucia look at this ship, they see that it's covered in ash. It's grey in colour. As the ship nears, they see that the rigging has broken, the sails have been burnt. This ship looks like somebody torched it. The ship makes its way into the harbour and then customs officials board the ship. And they see that the deck is covered in ash. It's thick. There's a layer of it. They also notice that inside the ship are 10 people who have been burnt to death. It's a horrific sight. The customs officials get hold of the captain and they ask him a question. They ask him, where have you come from? And the captain replies, I've come from the gates of hell. Now, to understand what has happened to the ship, which was a British vessel called the Rodham, we have to go back uh, a few days and we have to go to a new location. The place we're now at is a small island in the Caribbean called Martinique. And we're in April 1902. Martinique is an island in the Caribbean and in 1635, France had claimed this island. It still remains to this date a part of France. It's part of the outermost region of Europe. And in 1902, in April, it was a wonderful place. Martinique was known as the Paris of the Caribbean. It had a major city on the coastline, a city called Saint-Pierre. And Saint-Pierre was a fashionable place. It had beautiful architecture. It had people who were chic, who were in touch with what was happening in France, the fashion of France, the zeitgeist of France. There was one more unique thing about Saint-Pierre, and it was this. It was situated in the shadow of a volcano. This volcano was just seven kilometers away from the city and it was called Mount Pele. And in April 1902, Mount Pele started showing signs of awakening. Sulfurous fumes start emitting from this volcano. These fumes make their way into Saint-Pierre and it smells like rotten eggs. As the rumbles and tremors continue, this is bad news for the governor of Martinique, a man called Louis Moutet. Now, Louis Moutet had just made his way from France onto the island. And the reason he was there was because there was going to be a general election held on May 10th of 1902. These elections were very crucial because at stake was the very culture of the island of Martinique. Here's what was happening in this election. There were two parties. The first one was called the Progressive Party. And ironically, it stood for white supremacy. The second party was called the Radical Party. And they represented the largely black and mulatto population of the island, the majority of this island. And the reason this election that was supposed to be held on 10th May 1902 was extremely important was because the Radical Party had made major inroads. There were two seats that Martinique held in the French Assembly and uh, the Radical Party had already gotten one of them. Governor Louis Moutet had landed upon the island to make sure that the second seat did not go to a Radical candidate. He wanted to ensure that the second seat went to the Progressive Party. When the mountain awakens, the governor decides that he has to make sure that people do not get afraid of it and the people of Saint-Pierre do not leave. Because the people of Saint-Pierre, this was the more affluent part of Martinique and they consisted of a majority progressive voter base. 
if they left then chances of his party losing were higher so he starts downplaying this volcano he starts ensuring that people do not be afraid of it here's how he does it he asks the local newspaper to start printing articles saying that there is nothing to worry about and the paper agrees to do this because they get a significant proportion of their advertising revenue from the political parties they start putting out news that there is nothing to worry about that this is just routine they were doing this on the advice of the government's committee and this committee was headed by an expert the expert was a high school science teacher on the advice of this guy they started putting out news saying that nothing at all is going to happen because of this volcano time ticks on and on 2nd may there are more tremors the ash starts falling on the town they wake up and they see that the streets are gray because ash is covering saint pierre on 5th may 1902 things take a drastic turn lava spills out of the volcano and a hot mud flow races down its side it hits a sugar processing plant and it leads to the deaths of two dozen people the activity of the volcano is having some nightmarish outcomes insects that live in the forests around this volcano start fleeing heeding the warning that this volcano was giving giant centipede start making their way into saint pierre and it's not just the insects 2 meter long vipers have made their way from the jungles and slithered into saint pierre there were a vast amount of snakes and they led to the deaths of livestock and human beings 50 people according to some reports were said to have been killed by this deluge of snakes soldiers were deployed and they were seen shooting these snakes in the streets and yet nobody takes the warnings seriously on 7th may 1902 the people of saint pierre see that the volcano is now very close to erupting it's bubbling and its lava is spewing at its crater there's a hellish vision where at the crater there's not just lava there is also lightning which is called volcanic lightning which is generated by this volcano it's striking the crater of this volcano ash is now falling thick and fast and people are panicking they want to leave saint pierre immediately but governor mute still feels that he can go ahead with this election on 10th may here's what he does instead of letting people go he himself with his wife comes to saint pierre checks into a hotel to assure the people that nothing is going to go wrong after that when the people still do not feel at ease he sends the military in to forcefully keep them in saint pierre on the morning of 8th may 1902 there is calm governor mute for a second feels that he was right they can go ahead with the elections after all but then on 802 am on 8th may 1902 mount pele erupts it's a cataclysmic sound it's a sound so loud that it's heard 500 kilometers away in venezuela a giant black cloud filled with superheated gases called a pyroclastic flow rushes towards saint pierre there was a ship that was out at sea a little distance away from the city and they reported what happened at 8:02 a.m. this cloud this terrifying hot fiery cloud rushes at an incredible speed within minutes it has completely swallowed saint pierre it was horrifying it is one of the worst ways to go some people were lucky and died instantly others could feel their blood boiling inside their bodies they tried to get away but eventually succumbed walls structures buildings ripped apart metals bent glass exploding 
within minutes this entire town had been turned to rubble in the harbor was a british vessel called rodham and the captain on seeing this cloud descending towards the city he quickly decides that he's going to set sail he decides to head for the ocean and as he does he's still too late the cloud hits them ash and debris start falling onto the ship within seconds 10 of his men are scorched to death the sailors who survived later commended the captain's bravery by telling people that this man stood on this burning deck holding on to the steer making sure that their ship left sapier and he stood on the deck despite ash falling on his hands eventually 9 hours later the ship reaches saint lucia and they're able to tell people what happened the city was so hot it was such a burning cinder that people couldn't even go on it to rescue others they had to wait four whole days before anyone could set foot in that city four whole days later people finally made their way to saint pierre and they saw the destruction the absolute leveling of this once extremely beautiful vibrant city the paris of the caribbean as they made their way through they saw human beings completely scalded the clothes had vaporized off the bodies of the people they were charred remains that's all as they made their way through they passed a structure there is no hope that anyone would be alive but as they passed the structure suddenly they hear someone crying out very quickly they break down a door and they find this man this man was going to be one of three survivors in the entire city and his story is incredible the man they find his name is ludger silbaris ludger silbaris had an incredible story here's what the story was on 7th may 1902 ludger silbaris had found himself in a bar and at the bar he had gotten into a fight this fight was pretty vicious and he had ended up killing a person he was taken to jail and he was supposed to hang on 8th may 1902 he had been kept in solitary confinement it was the worst thing that you could do to a prisoner he was placed in an isolated cell that had thick walls and it was under the ground it was meant to be a punishment but it ended up saving his life he had heard the mighty explosion of the volcano and then within minutes he had felt the scorching heat it had penetrated through his cell he had hot footed it inside his cell he had taken off his shirt urinated on it and placed it in the gaps to prevent the smoke from coming in he heard the screams of the people as they slowly burnt to a crisp he couldn't understand what was happening for four days he had wallowed in his cell desperately seeking water and then four days later finally he heard the people out there looking for survivors ladga silbaris when he was found he was pretty badly burnt but he was alive and he survived he eventually was given a pardon as well he was not sentenced to death he was let loose and he ended up joining pt barnum's circus and there he spent the rest of his days in a replica of his jail cell night after night telling people of what had happened at martinique in total the volcano wiped out the entire saint pierre it wiped out 30000 people 30000 people perished because of this one volcano it was the worst volcanic disaster of the 20th century and it's the third worst in about 2000 years and the death toll could have been greatly reduced a lot less people needed to die if governor mute had not taken the decisions that he had if he had not cared about the votes as much as the voters this is a tragedy from history but it's also a warning for the future and it is the story of the eruption of mount pele
If you like the story, then please leave a like and a comment. If there are other things you'd like me to talk about, then also please comment them in the section below. Uh, and in general, if you have any thoughts, opinions or things that you'd like to say about this video, then please definitely write it in the comment section. I read all the comments, especially the good ones. As usual, this episode is brought to you by My Career. If you'd like to support my career, then you can do two things. The first thing you can do is you can check the description for links to shows I'll be doing. And the second thing you can do is you can become a member of this channel. It'll genuinely help support the channel. And you also get to come for the live recording of every single story. Anyway, that's all from this story. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.